a reading from the book of the prophet Habakkuk. How long, O Lord, I cry for help, but you do not listen. I cry out to you, violence, but you do not intervene. Why do you let me just see ruin? Why must I look at misery? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and clamorous discord. Then the Lord answered and said, Write down the vision clearly upon the tablets so that one can read it readily. For the vision still has its time, presses on to fulfillment, and will not disappoint. If it delays, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not be late. The rash one has no integrity, but the just one, because of his faith, shall live. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I remind you to stir into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather of power and love and self-control. So do not be ashamed of your testimony to our Lord, nor of me, a prisoner for his sake, but bear your share of hardship for the gospel with the strength that comes from God. Take as your norm the sound words that you heard from me in the faith and love that you are in Christ Jesus. Guard this rich trust with the help of the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you would say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your servant, who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here immediately and take your place at table. Would he not rather say to him, prepare something for me to eat, put on your apron and wait on me while I eat and drink. You may eat and drink when I am finished. Is he grateful to that servant because he did what was commanded? So should it be with you. When you have done all you have been commanded, Say we are unprofitable servants. We have done what we were obliged to do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the first Sunday of October every year is Respect Life Sunday throughout um, the month of October, there's a lot of different Respect Life aspects of that month, but particularly the first Sunday is Respect Life Sunday. And when it comes to matters of respecting life, I always hear people ask me different questions like, well, do I have to do this? Do I have to do that? Do I have to be involved in this ministry? Do I have to vote in this particular way? And what comes to my mind really is this last line of the gospel. We have done what we were obliged to do. We are unprofitable servants. We have done what we were obliged to do. Our faith is not a lot about obligation. It's about love. Imagine a husband coming home to his wife and saying, honey, What's the least I have to do to not have you walk out on me? What's the least I have to do to make you feel loved? That's not how you show love. I mean, it, you, it just, even if you did what she said, it ain't gonna work. You have to do more and look for what is 
more? What is it that draws us to really go above and beyond? And part of respecting life is seeing a value in every single person's life. A lot of times I hear different arguments about, well, what was that life worth? And why, why, would, why would God want this to happen? Why would this person not live so long? It, it, it doesn't make sense. A good example is from a friend of mine. A friend of mine, Michael, has had a twin brother. He had a twin brother who six days after birth, basically due to complications at birth, he died. And people are like, why, why would God do that? Why would God bring a life into the world? If we believe every life is valued, how can a life like that have value? How can a life like that, that person had no chance to make a difference in this world? Why would God do that? And it's something for us to wrestle with. Why does God let there be lives that may not appear to make a difference be in the world? Part of it's recognizing that every life does make a difference. Every life in this world makes some kind of difference, and it's our obligation, respecting life, to love every person, to show and speak of how each person's life has meaning. Bernie's Buffet, wonderful example of how we speak that every life has meaning. Sometimes when people come there, they come there not because they need a meal, but because they need company. They need someone to come sit with them, talk with them, and remind them that they are a human being deserving of love, compassion. When it comes to respect life, it's not about just voting in a particular way. Sometimes people wanna make sure, and let me be clear, it is Catholic teaching that we, are against legal abortion. It is Catholic teaching that we are against legal abortion. However, to be pro-life, to be respecting life means also doing everything else that it means to get a woman to not feel like that is her only option. What do you do to really respect the woman who's scared and feeling alone? What do you personally do to prevent putting your girlfriend in that situation? What do you personally do to respect that it's more than just getting a child to birth, but raising a child that needs to be supported? And respecting life doesn't begin, doesn't end at birth, it goes all the way through to the end of life. I know there's a few people here who are a little bit more concerned about end of life issues than beginning of life issues. And it's important that we affirm those people who aren't able to do what they once did are still valued in our society. They're still valued by our parish. They're still valued by our community. And those people who've done horrendous things those in prison, when we visit them in prison, those people who the society says are not worth our time, spending time and effort giving to them, being with them, walking with them in the struggles of life. Respecting life is more than just politicking and casting a vote, though those are parts of it. It's call for each one of us to look for how can I show love for each and every life? How can I stand up and say every life has meaning? Going back to my friend Michael, his twin, they named him James Joseph. Some people are like, what? If, if you're claiming that, like the church does, that every life has meaning, what meaning did James Joseph's life have? 
Well, his family was still impacted by James's life because it wasn't a six-day life. It was a nine-month and six-day life because life begins at conception. And even before he was born, he was affecting his family. He was causing an effect in this world even before he was born. The loss of James Joseph impacted that family so powerfully that they decided that they wanted to have one more kid, they made a conscious effort for it. If there hadn't been a James Joseph Shockley, there may not be a Christopher Robert Shockley. 